welcome to FIBA India podcast. I would like to focus with you today on Mark's Gospel chapter 14 from verses 3 to 9. Mark's Gospel chapter 14 verses 3 to 9. Let me read from verse 3. And while he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he was reclining at table, a woman came with an alabaster flask of ointment of pure nard, very costly, and she broke the flask and poured it over his head. There were some who said to themselves indignantly, Why was the ointment wasted like that? For this ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Leave her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. For you always have the poor with you, and whenever you want, you can do good for them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for burial. And truly I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. The title I, I have given for this passage is A Total Devotion to the Lord. And I would like to look at it from different headings. First of all, the setting. Where exactly did this happen? Two, what happened? Three, what was the reaction of the people around? Four, how did Jesus look at this act of Mary? And then finally, what lessons can we learn from this passage? First of all, it's a setting. The Bible says in verse 3, While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, he was reclining at table. And it is very straightforward. He was invited for a meal. It was the house of Simon. And they were all sitting around the table. And this incident happened then. What exactly happened? A woman came with an alabaster flask of ointment of pure nard. It was costly and she broke the flask and poured it over his head. Just imagine everybody sitting for a meal and all of a sudden in Mark's gospel, the name is not mentioned. The other gospel writers talk about it and Mary walks in and she comes with this big flask of ointment and it says it is pure, it's costly, and she broke it in the presence of the people. Now, you can understand how they would have reacted to this place, to this situation. Mary just comes in, breaks, and the entire ointment is poured on his head. She did not bother. She did not ask anybody's permission to do it. She just did it. And it is not something that is small that you can carry it with you wherever you go. So Mary prepared herself to come and visit the Lord in Simon's house. Mary would have known. And so Mary came well prepared. It is her initiative and it was a spontaneous act. And she did it, not worried about people's response and people's reaction. And the Bible says the, there were some who said to themselves indignantly, why was the ointment wasted like that? In Matthew's gospel, chapter 26, it says in verse 8, and when the disciples saw it, they were indignant. Now, we really do not know how many people were there, but from the passage, I understand that household of Simon would have been there, the disciples would have been there, and then few more people would have been there. And when this happened, they murmured to themselves. Now, you know, when we do something, there will always be people who will murmur. And the murmuring is because of these reasons. One, I am not able to do what you are doing. So let me murmur. Two, you are showing off and I am jealous of it. So let me murmur. Three, I don't like you and I don't like what you're doing. So let me murmur. Four, 
others are murmuring let me join with the majority now mary would have heard it because the bible says in mark's gospel they scolded her but in matthew it says they said to themselves now what whatever it is whether mary heard it or whether they kept it to themselves or said it to themselves jesus heard it and jesus came to a defense look at the way the lord responded and looked at mary's act he said leave her alone what she is doing is a beautiful thing now look at the next phrase to me you may not like what she is doing you may have lot of reasons you may have lot of questions but leave it she is doing it to me in other words what the lord is saying is i am not condemning her action her action is highly commendable you don't get involved just leave her and the bible says in verse 8 in mark's gospel chapter 14 she has done what she could oh i like it in other words she is not trying to impress others she is not trying to see that she tell others she is better off than others what she could she did it it may not be up to the expectation of others or it could be something that is very less or something that is more but that's all she could do it and the lord commends her for this and the lord says this act of hers will be told in memory of her she will go away the generations will move away but what she did they will talk about it isn't it true this would have happened many many years back but we are talking about it now friend you do not know i do not know but our act of worship our act of gratitude our act of devotion our children our grandchildren great grandchildren the generation to follow will talk about it what are the lessons that we learn from this passage there are six lessons and let me place that one by one the first one worship is an expression of a grateful heart only the worshipper knows how deep his relationship is with the lord only he knows what the lord has done in his life and out of that gratitude to the lord he just begins to worship and offer worship to god no one else need to know worship is an expression of a grateful heart two worship impacts people around good or bad there could be people murmuring around you looking at your act of worship they will question they will complain they will bargain they will murmur but mary did not bother mary act was a spontaneous act it was a willing act she did not sit there and decide whether should i do it or not do it she just did it because she did not want to miss that opportunity and my friend how important it is for you and me to have this that worship need not be something that i do it because others are not doing it or do it because others are doing it i will do it because i want to do it i love him and i will worship him three worship is always christ centered it is not you centered it is not me centered it is not to look back and say did i worship him well did others see how i worship and that is why when we offer worship to the lord it is not when i sing for the lord it is not an entertainment it is not how well i sing yes we need to give our best it is how much i thank the lord it is did i do it well for the lord is the lord happy with my worship that's what mattered it is not me centered it is christ centered fourthly worship doesn't count the cost 
Mary just brought that alabaster box, flask of ointment and of pure nard, very costly and she broke it. Now look at it. It's pure. It's costly. She broke it. Never to use again. It's gone. That which she saved for the future, she just poured everything on. You know, let's not bargain with God about our worship. Let's not hold back that which we want to give it to Him. Give it to Him. And then see how it can turn. The Lord will be pleased with our worship. Let us not give the leftovers to the Lord. Let us give our best. It could be the time in the morning, early morning when we are fresh. When we want to worship the Lord, let's do it. Let's not do it when we come back home tired and not being able to even pray and talk and read the word. Let's not do that. Let us give the fresh fruits, the first fruits to the Lord. Let us use our talents and gifts for the Lord. Let us say, Lord, my voice, I want to give it to you. Lord, my talent, my skill, I want to give it to you. Worship him with what he has given you. Finally, worship leaves a legacy. You find in verse 9, And truly I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. We will go. The generation will pass on. But remember, others will talk about it. They will talk about the act of worship. And the more they talk about it, they will seek the God whom you and I worship. Can we leave that legacy? Can we leave that for our children, for grandchildren? Have they seen an expression of a grateful heart? Have they seen us worshipping the Lord, not counting the cost? Is my worship Christ-centered? Do I just break out in worship or is my worship more based on location? Remember, Mary worshipped him in that house. She did not say, let me worship him when I go on the Sabbath. She just broke out in worship. My place of thanksgiving can be a place of worship. Uh, my place of miracle can be my place of worship. My place of blessing can be my place of worship. I don't know. But this passage has been a great blessing to me. What she has done is beautiful and she did it to me. Will the Lord tell this about you and me? And as we go through the season... Let us draw closer to him and ask, Lord, how is my worship? Meet with me, O Lord. Let me just be a person always grateful, always breaking in to worship. God bless you. For feedbacks, please write to us to info at fibaonline.org or WhatsApp us to 9163642521640.